Everybody's real quiet, so I'll call our meeting to order. Um, I appreciate everyone being here this evening. Um, first thing we have on our agenda is establish the fact that we have a quorum of our board team. Um, all of our board teams here except for uh, Mr. Hernandez, and he's supposedly on his way. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, the second item on our, on our agenda this evening is our invocation. We're honored this evening to have the senior pastor from First Presbyterian Church, Pastor Joel Moore, and he's going to lead us in our invocation. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we come before you this evening to praise your name and to ask for your blessings. For you are a God that desires for all people to walk in the light of your truth. You are a God who delights in wisdom and knowledge. You are a God who grants wisdom and knowledge to those who ask it from you. You are a God who commands that the way be made clear for children to learn and grow and flourish with the gifts that you've bestowed on them. You are a God who instructs parents to provide for and to nourish and to protect those entrusted to their care. And you are a God who encourages communities to come together to read and to write and to sing and to play and to educate and to pray all for our good and for your glory. Knowing these things about you and knowing that we need your help we ask that you would guide the school board of San Angelo Independent School District tonight as they meet. We pray for the board president, Lanny Lehman. We pray for vice president, Max Parker. We pray for treasurer, Bill Dendel. We pray for Gerard Gallegos. We pray for Art Hernandez. We pray for Taylor Kingdom. We pray for Amy Mazel Flint. We pray for superintendent, Carl Detloff. We pray for welcomed guests and concerned citizens present. Let their conversations tonight be open and forthright. Let their discussions be tempered with grace. Let their debates seek consensus. Let their dis disagreements be civil. In all things, let all of us continue to treat each other as we ourselves would want to be treated. Lord, we would be remiss if we failed to lift up the very people that we are trying to serve here tonight. Therefore, we pray for the teachers and the staff and the administrators of our schools. We pray for the families of our students. We pray especially for our students. Let our decisions made here tonight focus on the goal to educate and train our children to be faithful and productive members of our community to everyone's benefit and to your glory. In the name of Jesus, who knows what it's like to be a child, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Moore. We appreciate that. Our next item on our agenda, as these students come forward, we've got some great students here from Bel Air, Ele Bel Air Elementary School, and I'll introduce them to you. We have Cheyenne Gonzalez, Chloe Kelly, Ian Jones, and John Claude Mesa. So if y'all will come forward as everyone else stands. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If they want to stay up here and some parents want to come and take pictures, that would be great. Turn that way. Yeah. Now, now I want to take a picture of your front side. These are all fifth graders at Bel Air, so uh, we're excited to have them this evening. Thank you all for coming. Before we start our recognitions, I'll, I'll read our script for this evening. I, um, I'm going to have to get my glasses out to read it. <coughs> um, good evening and welcome. As the president of the Board of Trustees of San Angelo Independent School District, I'd like to welcome all of you who are present at tonight's regular school board meeting. I also welcome those of you, you who might be watching the tape of this meeting on our public access channel, Channel 4. We appreciate your interest in our students. 
All items that we've discussed at our meeting this evening have been posted as required by state law. Also, as you may be aware, our board meets a minimum of two times per month, and most, if not all, the items on our agenda this evening have been discussed at a previously held uh, pre-agenda board workshop. As members of the San Angelo Independent School District's Board of Trustees, we're here to set goals, listen to reports from our superintendent, approve budgets, contracts, and personnel appointments, and to make policy for the school district. Please keep in mind um, that our meeting is a meeting of the Board of Trustees held in the public and not a meeting of the public. However, with that in mind, we have an item on each one of our meeting agendas that allows anyone present who wishes to speak on our agenda on our, to our board team an opportunity to do so. I'll make certain that we give everyone an opportunity to speak on any item not on our agenda this evening. Additionally, prior to taking any votes, I will ask audience members if they would like to make any comment. Anyone wishing to make comments on any agenda item should please do their uh, best to limit their comments to five minutes. In compliance with Texas state law, these proceedings are recorded and will become a part of the San Angelo Independent School District's permanent legal record. In order that our tape might adequately reflect the proceedings, I ask that you please refrain uh, from talking while others might also be speaking. Also, I said, as I remind my fellow board team members to please turn off their cell phones or silence them at this particular time. Again, it's my pleasure to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting. We thank you for taking the time to join us. We appreciate your interest in the activities of our district and the business of our and, and the business of our district. Um, so we'll move forward to item four, which is recognitions, and we've got. Um, our executive director of athletics, Brent McCauley, and he's going to help us with that this evening. Well, as always, Dr. Detloff, Mr. Lehman, Board of Trustees, we appreciate the opportunity to be here to recognize our student athletes. We've got six groups here tonight, uh, some of our fall groups that have uh, reached uh, or, or went beyond uh, district competition. So we'll start off with Central High School football. Coach Davis. Thank you all for having us. Uh, y'all come on in, guys. Come all, come all the way up and uh, just kind of make a little half circle there. <coughs> While they're coming in, I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh, I know y'all's time is precious, so uh, we're very proud of these uh, 2019 Bobcats. Uh, had a, had a good year, not going to say it was fantastic. Uh, we were six and five, but uh, played extremely hard in all of our games. And uh, uh, I really like this football team. I've said that before, the, the effort, the attitude, the, the work ethic, everything about these guys was top notch. And, and it was that way all year. We, had, we didn't have any drama. We had several of these young men make uh, all district in, in different areas. I want to recognize Tanner Dabbert. Step out, Tanner, please, where you're at. Tanner was the offensive uh, offensive player of the year for uh, District 3-6A, and that, that was a big honor for, our, for him and our program. Uh, and then we had several others that made, you know, all district at a position. Uh, the, the one thing we're really proud of with this group is uh, for the 10th year in a row, San Angelo Central made the playoffs 10 years in a row, and this was the 10th one. So we were very proud of that. These guys kept our tradition going. And uh, we're looking uh, forward to a lot of really uh, good things to happen in the future. Uh, San Angelo Central 2019 Bobcats. Thank you. 
Okay, next up we have the Lakeview High School football team. Coach Guevara. Good evening. Thanks for having us here tonight. Uh, we've got a few boys. A lot of the boys are working tonight or have other obligations. So, But uh, I'd just like to thank, first of, all, first of all, thank you guys, the board, Dr. Detloff, uh, Athletic Administration, our administration on campus. Uh, it, was a, it was a tough year. We started off great. We just, uh, there's... You know, couldn't get it together most time uh, throughout the season. But the, the kids played hard. They, they practiced hard. They put in the time. They came in early in the morning. Like I always tell them, they were the first to get there and the last to leave. So that says a lot about their character, uh, keeping up the grades. I think we had 100% on passing at the varsity level. Uh, but we did good. It, it, it's come together. Uh, just uh, unfortunate that we couldn't put it together. <laughs> but... Uh, we're excited for the direction we're headed. Uh, first of all, and another, like thank, we couldn't do this without our trainers, uh, Troy and Kelsey. They they put a lot of hours in, and obviously they're at practice right now. Uh, but like to thank them, our coaching staff, Coach Mejia, OC, Derek Allenbar, DC, Coach Costin is here, Coach Gonzalez, Coach Soa, Coach Butts, Coach Hernandez. Uh, we got a couple of coaches on 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 site. They're practicing, hosting uh, parent meetings, and so forth. But no, uh, thank thank you, and I appreciate you guys for everything you do and your support. Uh, we're gonna keep. We're already we're working for next season, and we're excited. Uh, these boys, these boys maintain a positive attitude. Um, you can't ask for more when you're against the wall, and you're still you're you're still positive. You're there at practice, and you give me everything you have, and that's all you can ask for in life. Thank you. Okay, next up we have the Central High School volleyball team. Coach Bozarth, you'll come on up. Thanks so much for giving us this opportunity to brag on our kids just one more time. Such a, such a great group. This year's Lady Cats uh, finished the season 27-10, and 10, and we were the district co-runner-up. Um, they defeated Fort Worth Pascal in the by-district round uh it's exciting five set match uh this and i'd like to go ahead and introduce them to you they're very awesome kids uh number one junior ds hannah gomez hannah was second team all district and academic all district number four senior libero caroline detloff caroline was second team all district academic all district and academic all state number five junior outside hitter maya moore maya was second team all district academic all district Number six, senior middle blocker, Chelsea Weldon. Chelsea was first team uh, all district, academic all district, and academic all state. Number seven, junior outside hitter, Steely Poss, first team uh, all district, academic all district. Number nine, junior middle blocker, right side, Cameron Daniels. Cameron was honorable mention all district. Number 10, junior middle blocker, right side, Nadia Fierro, honorable mention all district. Number 11, senior right side, Darren Green, academic all district, academic all state. Number uh, 14, senior setter, Veronica Guerrero. Veronica was our district co-MVP. She was academic all district and academic all state. 
Number 15, sophomore right side setter Amory Fly, Academic All District. And number 16, junior outside hitter Asher McMillan, Academic All State. All District. Sorry, she will be Academic All State, but she's got to be a senior and she's just a junior. Uh, super smart bunch, hard working group. Uh, they represent our district with uh, a lot of class and character. So thank you. Okay, next up we have the Lakeview Cross Country Group and Coach Leeper, if you'll bring your group on up now. All right, so this year we had our entire boys team advance to regionals, which was seven boys, and we had one girl advance. Unfortunately, she, she moved out of state shortly after that, so she won't, she's not here today, but we had seven boys advance. Um, those seven boys are all first or second year runners, and they placed 17th at regionals, which uh, last year we placed 21st. So these new runners have already done better than their successors, and so I'm really proud of them. Closest to me, I have John Gloria, and then Aiden Ayer, RJ Bohannon, Antonio Cabrera, and uh, Justin Vasquez. These boys presented themselves so well. When I took them to the regional meet, you would not have thought for a moment that they were all first or second year runners. They acted like super professional. They conducted themselves very well. I never had to worry about these boys. I didn't worry about their grades. I didn't worry about behavior problems. They showed up, they did what they're supposed to do. They pretty much pretended like they didn't need me. They all had it on their own. They show great leadership skills and I am very proud of them and I thank y'all for letting me show them off today. Thank you. Okay, uh, we've had a great fall tennis season. Both of our programs are here tonight. They've had a great season. Excited about what the spring holds for them. But we'll start first with the Central High School Tennis and Coach Abelez. Come on up, guys. All right, well, first off, I'd like to say uh, thank you all for having us. We appreciate it. Um, it's always nice to have these kids come up and just kind of uh, just brag on them a little bit and all the things that they've done uh, this year. So thank you all, and thank you for the support and everything. Uh, thank you for the parents. We have a lot of parents here, so thank you all for being here and supporting us as well. Um, yes, it is a big group. We try to get as many as we can, and uh, not only are they just bodies, they can actually play tennis, too. They actually play tennis pretty well. So uh, this year was a great year for us. You know, we were building off of last year, and last year we did some great things and went into the spring and did some great things. But this year, um, I feel like we really, we really did some good things, and that's just going to put us in a better position to do some great things in the spring and then into the fall for next year. And 
know, our big thing is team tennis. And so um, our team tennis wrapped up this year, and we're about to enter the spring after Christmas to go into individuals. But for the fall, we were 18-8 and eight overall. We were the district runner-up in a close – in a close district final match to Abilene High. Um, we were by district champs. We beat Fort Worth Pascal. From there, we moved on. And last year, we got knocked out in the area round to Amarillo Tascosa. Uh, this year, we got to play Amarillo Tascosa. And we, uh, huge win. We won 10 9, came down to, I can't even tell you how many third set tiebreakers and fight and determination, but. Um, I know we won one tiebreaker, I think 11-9, another one like 14-12 and 10-8. And it just goes to show the hard work and the determination and um, the way things are moving in this program and, and everything that goes with that. And so from there we went on and we were the regional quarter finalists, came up just a hair short against uh, El Paso Coronado. However, it was a great match um, for those of you all that were there. I know Coach was there, and uh, we were up 4-3 after doubles. And on paper, they should have beat us pretty handily. But, you know, sometimes paper doesn't say the whole truth. And so we fought hard, and we came up a little bit short, I think 10-6. Uh, and that was great, though. Um, from this group, we had eight first-team all-districts. We had eight second-team all-districts. And we had five honorable mentions. So we are doing great things. We're moving in the right direction for um, all the parents and faculty and staff. I can't forget Coach Creek over here. She's a huge asset to us. Um, she does a lot of things behind the scenes, but she, she keeps everything going, and she's my psychiatrist. So <laughs> it's great to have her, and she does a lot for us. So we couldn't do that without her, and we couldn't do it without these kids and parents and you, the faculty, and um, everything that we have we're so appreciative for. So thank you all very much. Appreciate it. You guys, you start. You guys move back there. There you go. There you go. Okay, next up is the Lakeview Tennis, and Coach Corolla, if you'll bring your group on up. Oh, that's all me now? It's on? Okay. Well, how's it going? I'm Coach Corolla, and this is the Lakeview tennis team here with my assistant, Kendra. And uh, this is my first time doing this, so if I throw some ums in there, please forgive me. But uh, I'll say I did again. So this season was really, really special for me. Just, you know, I came from the college culture to high school, which is, you know, completely different. But just coming in with these hardworking kids, like it was just really special, um, you know. Day one, I mean, I wasn't even there on day one, actually. I was there like five days after, when, and, and Kendra was leading the charge. But, you know, so we had to get to know each other very quickly. But these kids were able to adapt to the new situation and just ride with it, you know. And we started off really strong where we won the Copper's Cove tournament. Won, like, we beat a couple of 6A schools and then the other two or 4A. And then the very next weekend, we lost three matches in a row to some really tough regionally ranked teams. But I told them, I said, you know, like, other teams that we're, that we're going to be facing, you know, this is something that we don't shy away from because this is going to make us a better team going in the district. And sure enough, we didn't lose a single district match. Um, you know, won, won the district championship. 
uh, one by district area, and then we were regional uh, regional quarter finalists. So yeah, it was a very very good season. And we we eventually lost to Vernon, who got second at state. So I told him, hey, not a bad loss, not a bad loss, but. So, but we achieved a, a, a state ranking of number 15 and then a regional ranking of number six. So, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is possible without everyone here in this room on the board. So, all the kids and the coaching staff, we just want to thank everyone who does everything behind the scenes to make this even, ha even happen. So, round of applause for all, yeah, come on. And then all the parents and the fans who came out to our matches, that was really special. And then obviously um, the kids, you know, the kids every day, every time I asked them to do something, they just, yes, sir. And we just, we went along with it and it worked hard every day. And we had our goofy days, which is good, kept it light. But in the end, hey, we, we achieved a, a humongous goal. I'm really proud of them. So good job. And, and that's it. So we're good. We're good. Yep. Okay, I see Brent leaving, so I think that covers all of our uh, recognitions. That's good, that's good. <laughs> we'll, we'll take all the time we need to recognize students, so thank you. Um, I mentioned this earlier in my public comments, uh, previous to our recognitions. If there's anybody here wishing to make comments to our board team on items not on our agenda, now would be a great time to come forward. Um, I see no one wishing to do so, so we'll go past item five. Uh, we need approval of our minutes uh, is item six to have a motion to approve. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Dendron and a second from Mr. Gallegos to approve the minutes of our November 11, 2019 Special Finance and Pre-Agenda Board Workshop and our November 19, uh, 2019 Regular Board Meeting. Are there any questions or comments from our board team concerning our minutes? Any public comment? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Our next item is reports. Um, in each, each week in our Friday facts, our board team gets a student enrollment report. It looks like it's getting better every week almost. We, we're uh, increasing the number of students that we have uh, enrolled in SEISD uh, this year compared to the same time frame last year. Uh, so we feel really good about that, and we certainly thank the um, the community of San Angelo for uh, their, for entrusting us uh, with their children. Um, that's item A in reports. Uh, we're going to have an update on academic progress, and Dr. Ritter is going to give that to us. I'm going to call on assistance from Dr. Jeff Bright tonight to help me with the academic update. Good. You think I'm kidding. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to just give us an update tonight on um, how we are doing with our community-based accountability system and the work that we are doing um, in working toward our pillars and our picture of success in the district. So to, to begin our, our focus tonight, um, this is our mission uh, to engage all students in a relevant and inspiring education that produces future ready graduates. 
This is ultimately our picture of success in the district and what we strive for in everything that we do. We hold this mission statement up to all of our groups, um, knowing that this is what we, what we really are focusing on in our district for our students. So if that is our mission, what is it that we really want to be? What do we really want to accomplish? And what will we accept as evidence that we are becoming the system we want to become? This past week, we just had another uh, community-based advisory council, and it was quite a success. Uh, we had over 60 people attending here, and we were in this boardroom at table. Several of you in this room were there as well. Um, our advisory council is a group that is made up of community members, um, administrators, teachers, parents, and probably most important in the process, are our students that we have that represent their campuses but also represent the students of SAISD in this process. Um, we have involved students for the past two years in our advisory council work and the feedback that we have received from them has been phenomenal. Um, it literally will change the route we're thinking, the way we are headed when we all are together in this room and we process through the questions that we have as a group to get their input and their feedback so that we know that we are really best considering the needs of our students um, for the benefit of all of the students in our district. Because sometimes, just as the adults in the room, sometimes we don't always think the same way that our students do. And they're the ones in those seats and in those classrooms. And they really need to be, um, we need to talk to them and we need to get their opinion about things and about how we're doing in the things that we do in our schools. So this is our learner profile. We've talked about our learner profile, this advisory council again. We've had this now, can you believe we're going on three years having our learner profile? Um, and then following our, with our educator profile. I will say that uh, as part of all this process, we talk about telling our story. These pieces, the mission, the learner profile, and the educator profile are really, they're the cornerstones, the foundation of us telling our story in the district. We just, this. This past week, we had um, a, an audit from the Texas Education Agency um, in our special education department. And as we met with them on our entrance interview with them, as they come into the district and they spend three full days in your district, and they look at anything and everything, we started with these things. And we started with the same kind of presentation to them, talking about how we are building community-based accountability in our district, how we are working through advisory council, our success team with John Tanner and the work that we're doing there with teachers, administrators, and the involvement of our students as well, and parents and community members, and they were very impressed. They started their visit in our district with that, that lens, and what they came and told us Friday as we did our exit interview with them is, and it's really probably the best exit interview with TEA I've ever had. It was very, very positive. You know, there are things that we know we need to work on, and of course, that's, we know that. We are focusing on continuous improvement because we know that we really, what we want to become, we're going to constantly want to improve in what we're doing. But they said the focus of our district, the learner profile, the educator profile, they said every single person they spoke to, they did interviews of parents, teachers, students. They talked about the learner profile. They knew what it was. They said, we're seeing it out there in the classrooms. It's alive and well, and it really is driving the work that is happening in the classrooms, and you are to be commended for this work. So I thank you as the board for um, inspiring us and motivating us and helping us in developing those. You were, you were a part of the work of both of those as well, and in supporting us and moving it forward with what we have to do to truly live it out in our classrooms every day. So inspiring that involvement modeling the work, we're focusing on that culture of engagement and empowerment. Um, having those questions and just, you know, constantly going back, talking through the things that we are focusing on, that is the key to having it not just be something that we put on a wall, on a poster, but that it really carries through. Our community is talking about it, our classrooms, our students are talking about it and learning. Um, through our success team, the group that works with uh, John Tanner when he comes into our district to focus on the next steps of our community-based accountability system, that is a group of about 30 uh, educators, and he will be here the first week in January when we get back from the holiday. 
working with that group to take the input from our advisory council on our pillars of engaged, well-rounded students and high-quality staff. So all of that feedback from our advisory council meeting last week will go straight to that group for us to talk through and process and again continue the work of improvement and how we can, what is the evidence we should be looking for in our classrooms and through our students to know that we are moving forward the way we should be. Um, our elevator speech, I always put this in here because this again is another picture of success that SAISD believes the time is now to fully value the hopes and dreams of each child to remove whatever barriers exist in obtaining them and to never again allow a child to be treated as a test score. We will be accountable for each child's future by honoring their strengths and supporting their needs while improving the system that empowers them. In doing so, as we've talked through the key questions that the success team developed, this is what we did in the advisory council last week. We talked about to what degree, and we say, what evidence is it that we are going to accept that we are becoming the system we said we wanted to become in these areas. So to what degree do we provide opportunities for students to engage, initiate, reflect upon, and communicate real world applications? To what degree do we address, celebrate, and support all the way students are smart? I'm gonna hesitate right there and I'm gonna say, I think you saw evidence of that tonight. All the ways our students are smart. Those kids that came through tonight and every time we recognize our students who are in different programs, that is how, those are ways that they are smart and I love that we recognize that. To what degree is every student a communicator, a critical thinker, a collaborator, a collaborator and a creator? That's from our learner profile. And to what degree do we intentionally utilize student motives and voice to influence and guide the design of engaging work? So as some of y'all in this room worked with our students, we know that they had some good feedback for us. This is the process we use with our accountability engine and we put those key questions through this process. Down at the bottom in the green box, you see where it says evidence. What will we accept as evidence that we are becoming the system we said we were going to become? And when you ask kids that, and you say to what degree do we do these things, they're going to tell you. And so it is really exciting when we hear that there are some things going really well and then it really gives us a very clear direction when we hear from them the things that they feel that we should be doing differently or things we might consider. The other pillar that we're focusing on this year is high quality staff and these are our key questions for high quality staff. To what degree do we provide a meaningful, engaging, effective and high quality learning culture for our staff? And I'm gonna hesitate here and I'm gonna say the things that we have done as a district and you as the school board and Dr. Bright and the things that he has also supported us with and I think about like E3, the group here and as we are looking at, you know, everything from lighting in our classrooms, um, the furniture, the structure, the carpet, the things that we have in our classrooms are supporting that learning environment. And so um, that is certainly part of the evidence that we look for. To what degree do we support the overall wellness of our staff generally and individually? That would go into, say, our panorama survey and the information that we're getting from our staff, from our teachers and our students. To what degree does staff feel empowered to take a stake in the shared vision and share in the work? And to what degree do our systems and structures support the recruitment and induction of staff that aligns with our district vision? We have lots of conversation around that with Dr. Gomez and her team, but all of us are involved in that because we really know that we must recruit the very, very best people that are going to be working with our students and our learner profile and educa educator profile are the first things that we put in front of people that we're considering hiring. So just through this process, as it's very important to us to involve our community teachers and students, we have to be willing to recalibrate when the evidence is telling us that we need to change direction. We have to be willing to listen and we have to be willing to take action as needed. So we structure that CBAS, the signaling process is what we call this, gathering that evidence as part of that signaling process to be one of clear and compelling standards, organization of work and authenticity. Because as Simon Sinek has said, knowing our why and what you base your work in is the only way to maintain lasting success and have a greater blend of innovation and flexibility. When the why goes fuzzy, it becomes difficult to maintain growth, loyalty and inspiration. Manipulation rather than inspiration, FAST becomes the strategy of choice to motivate behavior. 
and we never want to be there. We want to be a district where people are inspired and motivated and feel a part of something wonderful, which is what I think that we are really doing. So what will be our legacy? Our personal vision, each of us has a personal vision to move this work forward that everyone should be able to see in our actions, our words, and the decisions that we make based on student benefit. What is our picture of success? The system that we want to become, and that is our moral imperative. The things that we believe, then we will stop doing what and start doing things to help us get there. And lastly, just um, a reminder of truly our district values that, we, that really make up our picture of success in the district. What is that evidence that we will accept that we are becoming the system we want to be in each of our values with the mission, the learner and educator profiles, teaching and learning plan with our district curriculum, professional learning communities, roles and responsibilities, our design qualities and student engagement, literacy and math initiative, capturing kids' hearts culture, and community-based accountability. So these are just reminders and things that we try to keep on the forefront. We use our accountability engine often in all of our meetings and decision making to try to remember that we need to base our decisions on evidence that are moving us closer to becoming the system that we want to be for student benefit. So thank you so much again for your support. I've included, just for a little light reading for fun, this was the um, challenge brief that we did at Community Advisory Council. Some of you in here, um, Amy and Mr. Parker were here, yeah, Ms. Flynn and Mr. Parker were here, and um, some of you have also been here when we've done challenge briefs, but um, it's very, it is challenging, I'll say that, but I know this, we, we hand this out and everyone just starts working in their groups and processing through, we have students in every group and representatives from every group, from community teachers, administrators, and then those, the students are in there as well. And so they process through that accountability engine with the key questions. And we ask everyone at the table, what evidence are we going to accept in this area that we're becoming the system that we want to become? So we have part two. The first week of January, we're going to be doing a, um, more work with John Tanner. And then we also will be, will be having another advisory council to finish up that work. So um, we will be talking more about that at a future board meeting. So thank you again for your support. We so appreciate it. Thanks, Dr. Ritter. Any questions or comments concerning that work thus far? It's just uh, one comment. Um, what you mentioned earlier about the kids that we had here earlier, and I've always noticed this every year as we progress, it's just uh, the amount of kids we have that are, that are getting a lot of academic recognition um, amongst football, in the, in the athletic sides and, and the band and UIL, they just, um, it's growing every year. And that's always great to see. That's always great to see. So you're doing, y'all are doing great. Thank you. Thanks, Gerard. Any other comments, Dr. Detloff? Thank you, Mr. Lehman. I just want to thank Dr. Ritter and her team for uh, really leading the journey on our uh, path to true accountability as a district. Uh, the community-based uh, advisory councils and the the meetings that are held, I think it just shows our, our nimbleness as an organization and a system to adapt to the needs of our learners uh, and also adapt to the needs of a, a modern era. So uh, I can't thank you enough. I think the learner profile is really the north star of our district. Um, these attributes will lead kids to success. Uh, and I'm just pleased and excited that our district, we want to see academic gains on all assessments. Um, so the, you know, the informal formative assessments as well as the state assessments. So I'm just excited that we are producing well-rounded students that uh, really, uh, it, we provide that inspiring education that, that hits on our mission. So uh, it's just a, a, a neat opportunity to, to be a part of this work and thank you for having student voice and, and leading the path. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dalloff. Can I have one more thing? Sure. Just one more thing. Um, so I was part of the community-based advisory system, and um, I really enjoyed, of course, enjoyed hearing the teach or listening to the students speak, but my favorite part was seeing the students interact with the teachers and the administrators that were at the table as well, um, because it was really, you know, when I was growing up, you'd, we just didn't get to do that. We didn't have that opportunity, and to have this, to watch the students have the opportunity to 
to meet with their with teachers and administrators and come up with this plan and feel like they're part of the process was really something special to watch. And as a parent of children in the district, that really meant a lot to me. So thank you so much for bringing them all together. Absolutely. Thank you. It, it really has been a great experience, and I think we're seeing great things from it. So we want to increase the number of students that we're bringing forward for this process as well. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Ritter. Okay, let's move forward to our consent item, item agendas, items, excuse me, our consent items, item, items A through C. Do we have a motion to approve our consent items? Move to approve um, consent items A through C. Second. second. So we have a, a motion from Mr. Parker and a slow second from Mr. Gallegos and <laughs> Dr. Kingman. Uh, the uh, first item we have up there is our... Uh, Donations. We appreciate the group at Texas Lunchbox who helps uh, provides lunches for some of our children um, in some of our schools. Item B is to consider the approval of our quarterly investment report ending May, excuse me, ending November 30th of 2019. And uh, item C is to consider our cooperative purchasing organizations that we'll use throughout the uh, throughout the year um, in purchasing items for the district. Um, all these items were previously ad addressed at our uh, pre-agenda board workshop, which was uh, last week. Any questions or comments about that from our board team? Any public comment? If not, all in favor of the, our, our consent items, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Item nine is to consider our bills, accounts, and financial statements for the month of November 2019. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Dindle and a second from Mr. Hernandez to approve our bills, accounts, and financial statements for the month of November 2019. Do we have any questions or comments concerning that from our board team? Mr. Lehman, just a note to the, the folks watching on Channel 4 in our effort at uh, fiscal responsibility. Um, all these, re we've already reviewed all these reports, but all these reports can be found online. If you go to our, our website, SIIC.org, uh, under the district tab, there's a subheading called uh, financial transparency, uh, and all these reports down to our checkbook can be found online. For viewing. Thanks, Mr. Dindle. Any other comments or questions from our board team? Any public comment? If not, all in favor of our motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Our next item is to cons item 10 is to consider our 2020-2021 uh, district calendar. And Ms. Hollihan's yes, ready to present that to us. I am. Thank you, board members. As we look at um, developing next year's calendar, the following are guidelines that we must consider. We must consider 75,600 minutes of student instruction. We also, then, must also include two, ba two bad weather days on that. So not only do we have to include 75,600 minutes, we also have to include 840 more minutes on that, so 76,440 minutes. Now that's a lot of minutes, right? Um, but you'll notice on our calendar for this year, and I, Becky, do we have a copy of that up there? Okay. Okay, I am so sorry. But you'll notice on our calendar uh, for this next year, and you didn't see it this year either, you don't see any um, day marked as bad weather. That's because they're student holidays. That is because we um, have enough minutes during the year that if we have a bad weather day, they're made up during the year through the minutes that our students go to school. So just so you understand that. And last year we had a question about that. So we don't have to put the bad weather days on our calendar because we've al we're already making them up. Um, you will have 187 teacher contract days. This next year, there will, of those 187 days, 13 will be professional learning days. Those professional learning days are utilized toward the end of each grading period for PLC instructional design work. And a lot of what um, Dr. Ritter was talking about is some of that prof professional design work. Spring break is aligned with Angelo State University and Howard College. And it's actually a year later, or I'm sorry, a week later this coming next year. It is March 15th through the 19th, um, 2021. 
Last day of instruction is May 28, 2021, allowing students and teachers taking classes at Angelo State or Howard College the opportunity to do so without missing any college class days. And graduation will be held on Saturday, May 29th, 2021. Now we talk about a Saturday graduation a lot, and every year, except this year, um, I ask the principals, do you still want a Saturday graduation? And especially Central, because of travel, they say, yes, we have to have Saturday graduation. It is so hard to get relatives out here on a Friday night. So, so every year I ask that, and they say, yes, we still want Saturday graduation. So that is our proposed calendar for the school year 2021. And my, I am asking the board to approve the calendar um, recommendation for, as presented for the 2020-2021 school year. Do we have any questions? Thanks, Shelly. Questions for Shelly? This used to be a pretty tough process. I think we've just about got it down to a science. As soon as I brag about it, then we'll, we'll yeah. <laughs> so, something will happen. Could you knock but, on wood? Uh, right. But uh, I think historically we've done a pretty good job of meeting the needs of our staff and meeting the needs of parents. And um, this year we added the, the fall break, uh, I think, which was a big hit for a lot of a lot of our parents and stuff. So I think we. Historically, we hadn't been able to do that, but when we moved to the minutes, minutes mm -hmm. rather than days, and it freed up some time for us. So I think that what we've been able to do um, in in working uh, towards a calendar that's you know fits the needs of our community and certainly um, efficiently and effectively educates our students. So thank you for your hard work on this. So we have a y'all go ahead, Carl. I just want to. Second that, uh, unofficially, Mr. Lehman, that to thank uh, Ms. Houlihan, I believe this is your 13th or 14th year in charge of the, uh, calendar. the calendar, and uh, you do have it to a, a science that benefits students uh, and, and the families of San Angelo. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all you do uh, for us there, Shelly, and you, you make it look easy, and we're going to sign you up for another 10 years <laughs> of, of calendaring. So any further comments from our board team? Do we have a motion to approve the calendar as presented? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, administration's recommendation for the 2021 SAISD district calendar. Second. Thanks. So we have a motion from Mr. Gallegos and a second from Mr. Parker. Any further board comments? Any public comment? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. Thank you again, Shelley. Good work. Our next item is item 11, uh, consider Lincoln and Glenn HVAC uh, replacement, and Mr. Henry's going to help us with that. Jason, thanks for your patience. Thank you Appreciate for you being me. here. During the budgeting process, the board identified five projects to pursue during the 1920 school year. Two of these projects were the replacement of aging HVAC systems at both Lincoln and Glenn Middle Schools. An RFQ was posted for the design for design build, build firms qualified to perform this type of turnkey project. A recommendation was presented and Schneider Elect Electric was hired to complete a facility assessment for the replacement of this equipment. Schneider Electric has completed their initial walk of, the, of these two facilities. All of the buildings on both campuses, including the gyms, will, be, will have the nearly 190 units replaced. The majority of these units are between 20 and 25 years old. Many of the units will be resized to increase efficiency of the system. New controls will also be added to all units. Attached is a summary of all of the work to be performed. The administration recommends accepting the pricing to replace the HVAC at Lincoln and Glenn Middle School for the turnkey price of $4,697,156. You said that pretty fast, you know, four million part. <laughs> so, so any questions for Jason or comments about um, our uh, planned uh, Lincoln and Glenn HVAC uh, replacement? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Just one quick question. <clears throat> the way this is worded, Schneider Electric was hired to perform the uh, the study uh, and come up with a price, but is Schneider Electric going to also be the ones that's performing all the work done? Yes, sir. They, they'll do all the work. All right. And so can our the, the motion be not only to uh, 
approve the price, but also to approve Schneider Electric doing the work there? Yes, absolutely. All right. Then I move that we approve uh, the turnkey pricing r recommended by Schneider Electric and also uh, that we approve Schneider Electric to replace the HVACs at both Lincoln and Glenn for the turnkey price of $4,697,000 and six six million. Excuse me, four million six hundred ninety-seven thousand one hundred fifty-six dollars. Second. Thanks, Mr. Parker. So we have a motion for Mr. Parker and a second from Mr. Gallegos. Any uh, further questions or comments concerning this? This is from our budget, or is it from our uh, fund balance? We we committed five million dollars for the project. Out of our budget. Out of our committed fund balance. Okay, that's what I thought. Yes, sir. Okay, so. I do have a comment that um, I'm glad we're getting this done. Um, I think Jeff remembers back in, God, what, 05, 06, when we still had AC units that were 30 years old. I mean, they were just all over, all over, the, all over the district. So, you know, I think our, our commitment to get all these things done and, and continue, because, you know, that's one thing we would always talk about back then was, are we going to keep going and changing these things out when they need to be changed? Because I didn't want us to, I didn't want to be on the board then and just go change it one time and then let it go for the next 25, 30 years like they had a habit of doing before. So yes, $4 million, it's a good investment. It is. So I'm, I'm proud of, of everything y'all have done to get this, to get this going and, and keep it going. So thank y'all. Just one other thing. I know we've, for the viewers that are tu uh, tuning in, we've uh, we've been discussing this for a few months. But last week, we discussed when all this work was going to be done, uh, when and all this will be completed by next summer. Was that what we were told? By the end of August next year. Yes. Okay. The end of August or the start of school? Well, it'll be done by the start of school. Okay. So that's actually the middle of August. Yes. Based on the calendar, based on the calendar we just approved, you know. Yes. So. Okay. Thanks. Good questions. Other questions? Any public comment? If not all in favor of our motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed indicate by saying no. Our motion passes. I think that covers our agenda for this evening. Um, announcements, um, Dr. Detloff. Yes, sir. Mr. Lehman, I just want to take this opportunity, and I know many of our, our board members will want to as well, but to thank Dr. Jeff Bright uh, for 17 years of leadership and financial stewardship in San Angelo <laughs> ISD. Uh, I'll reiterate some of our comments. We had the opportunity to celebrate Dr. Bright Friday at a retirement reception, and uh, Dr. Bright started, if, if I, let me access the file cabinets here. I believe Dr. Bright started in Brownsville, uh, Brown, Brownsville ISD for one year, quickly moved up the system, uh, went to Andrews ISD and as a coach and dabbled in uh, school finance. Uh, and then um, later uh, in 2003, uh, was hired by San Angelo ISD. Um, so for the past 17 years, he's just done a remarkable job for us. Uh, Jeff is fiscally conservative. He's frugal, but he actually has a heart under that exterior. Uh, I know public persona, uh, he likes the Dr. No moniker. Uh, however, we all know that Jeff is really Dr. Yes when it comes to kids. Uh, there have been many conversations where one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations with uh, myself and Dr. Bright, and he wants to do what's right for kids, and he, said, and he will say, Carl, let me work on it. We'll make that happen because that's a need. 1,300 kids will benefit from it, or 100 kids, or 10 kids. So uh, we just want to thank you for doing the right thing for our students in San Angelo. For the uh, local histographers out there, uh, 2003 was right... Uh, right on the verge of uh, challenging economic times and financial hardships uh, for SAISD. And so uh, many of our board members have chosen to run for office at that time. Uh, and along with Dr. Bright's uh, conservative approach, uh, they really have steered uh, the SAISD vessel onto 
clear waters uh, financially. So you've done a tremendous job for us, Dr. Bright, and I just want to thank you for, for your work and stewardship. Thank you. needed to stand up to stretch my knee, Jeff. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you want me to do Mr. Blair? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and do that, and then I want to say something okay. to sure. Dr. Bright. So also, at any time of redirection, uh, the next question pops up, what are you guys going to do now? Uh, so I want to announce our interim CFO, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services, Dr. Larry Blair, who's in the audience with us this evening. Uh, so Dr. Blair has a, a very distinguished career in public education circles. Uh, he started, uh, I believe, his career. He's been a superintendent at numerous places, uh, Eden, Schleicher County, Brady. Um, he's also been superintendent, and I may have to look at my notes for this one, Mansfield ISD, uh, as well as Fort Davis. So he has multiple superintendencies. Most recently, he was uh, served an interim position in Abilene ISD. And what I uh, am so excited about Dr. Blair's leadership, not only does he have multiple degrees from Angelo State University, he also has his PhD from the University of Texas, that at least one board member here will be <laughs> extremely excited about that. Um, but I just want to, I'm, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to learn and, and grow from you and, and with you, Dr. Blair. But both of our, our key uh, references that we checked and, uh, in this process to get Dr. Blair in the interim position, both said, Carl, you and your district will benefit from having him around the table. So we're excited about uh, your leadership as well. Um, and Jeff has uh, kept me afloat, Dr. Blair, so don't blow it. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Deloff. Um, yeah, I think Carl mentioned this, but when when I got on, I got on the board in 2001, and our district was in huge trouble um, financially, and we went we just gone through financial exigency, which was a lot of fun, and uh, had to lay off off all kinds of people, and uh, from the word go, from the very start, uh, Dr. Bright was um, a, a very sound conservative. Uh, person that helped us get through that first and then since that time he's done nothing but give us uh, solid counsel uh, and as to as to uh, how, how we run the district what we can afford to do what we uh, what we need to do for students um, of course you know we could, what we as a board team might want to do um, and spend I'm not sure Dr. Bright would always approve all of that um, but as uh, as Carl said uh, so eloquently, is that there's, I don't know of a single time that we had a specific need that involved uh, our students when Carl didn't, I mean, when uh, Jeff didn't dig a little bit deeper. Uh, so we appreciate uh, your commitment. I said in a board meeting one time when, when we tried to fire uh, Jeff, um, he <laughs> one, one board member uh, surprised the rest of the board and said, we're going to fire Jeff. And... Uh, that wasn't a very pleasant time, but through all of that, uh, I've, I've uh, earned an incredible amount of respect for you, Dr. Bright, and we appreciate all you've done for our district, so thank you. Yeah. I, I, I will echo, um, I, I haven't been on the board quite as long as Lanny, but for Gerard and I and some that came on, you were, um, I really appreciate your patience because uh, for those that are not uh, been a member of a school board uh, school finance is not something that uh, uh, We have any rec any knowledge of it's it's not something that most of the public understands and you were um, the Two things that we have to do every year uh, That's required is our budget and our and then we also have to go through an audit and you were uh, Very careful in explaining both of those things to board members and uh, over time um, we became to rely on you very heavily, uh, uh, especially with our budgeting. And part of the budgeting is not just uh, uh, making sure we have all the right money uh, budgeted, but you have to, and I still have 
don't know how you do this. Uh, we're going to lose this. Uh, um, Larry, you've got some big shoes to fill here, but how you're able to estimate in a, an area like San Angelo what our student count's going to be, because if our student count isn't correct, uh, this, this, uh, the budget won't work. And he's done an excellent, Jeff's done an excellent job making that uh, always of, uh, we've had a positive budget. Um, and lastly, something that most of the public doesn't know either is that uh, our school board has dozens of, well, since I've been on the board, maybe probably hundreds of training sessions where uh, we go for training and uh, you went to most of those trainings. And I know you didn't need to most of the time, but you did it and you, you uh, helped us to have a, um, help make up our team and um, we're going to miss you uh, uh, as being a part of our team because you've been very um, influential in making SAISD the district that it is. So I appreciate all the time that you've spent uh, in uh, not just at SAISD, but for dedicating your life to help uh, students uh, across the state of Texas. Thank you. One, one more. Doc, Dr. Bright's not only well-respected in the district, but he's well-respected in the state as far as being uh, understanding the ins and outs of uh, Texas school finance. I don't know if you guys have ever <coughs> delved into that, but when I first dove in, I drove, dove into a concrete pond and hit my head on the, on the, on the floor because it was, uh, it's, it's tough to, to, uh, to, to crack into the, and understand how all the idiosyncrasies work in, in the realm of school finance. And, and so, um, as being a neophyte board member of only about nine or ten years now, uh, Dr. Bright helped me, kept t put me under his wing for a day or two, uh, for a year or two, for, and finally helped me understand a lot of that, and that's really helped me uh, as far as my understanding of school finance and how everything works. Uh, and Dr. Bright is uh, such an expert at that. I just appreciate his his understanding and his uh, tutelage over the years and. Uh, and becoming the treasurer of the school board. So thanks, Dr. Bright. I got one more, Jeff. <laughs> okay. It'll be short. It, it will It will be. You know, when, and like Max said, we've kind of been on the board together since, since 05. But, um, you know, before I got on, I think it was when we were going through our first bond and all the – or, you know, you remember how, how all that was. And I'll never forget, I saw you at, a, at the skateboard park. You're taking your son to the skateboard park, and he, and he had this stack of papers. And I'll never forget this. I asked him, I go, because I went on the board then, but I asked Jeff, I go, how do you, how do, you do this? I mean, how, what, what drives you to sit there? Because, I mean, people were being very critical. And um, they, I mean, they had a lot of name calling and all that going on during those meetings. And I just told him, I said, I don't see how you could do this. And, you know, I told him I was interested in running for the board and, and I said, how do you get through that? And all he did, he had this pen in his mouth, like this, reading his paper, and he goes, out there. I go, what? Those kids out there is why I do this. And I've never forgotten that. I have never forgotten that, especially when we had to get something done for kids. I always remember that. You sitting in that pickup and just going through all these papers and budget stuff and all that, and you said, right out there. That's all you said was right out there. And you probably don't even remember saying that, but I remembered it. I remembered it. And it was one of those moments where I just kind of went, you know, I can work with someone like that. And, and it's, been, it's been a ride. It has been. And, and you've made it a lot more fun. So you really have, Jeff. <laughs>Y'all know I do not like this kind of stuff uh, because any success we have is not uh, the result of me. It's the result of a lot of people that have come together and do good things for kids. And I want to share two stories with you, if you don't mind. Uh, and, and here's an example of why we're successful. I remember one night in February, uh, 20 degrees outside, and I get a phone call about midnight. I, I was... In bed, I think. Uh, and the call was, we have a major water leak at Central. And we're trying to fix it, but we may have to cancel school tomorrow. That was about it. So a little after midnight, I go up there, 
And in this courtyard, we have about eight, eight guys, some maintenance guys, plumbers, back co-operators, and they're in, they're in there digging through some asphalt and dirt, and they had a hole about four foot deep, maybe six, eight foot wide, all the way around it. It's 20 degrees, did I mention that? <laughs> After midnight, and our guys are down there in that hole. One guy, I, I call him the toughest guy I've ever seen, no gloves, in the dirt, with a shovel, water's about a foot deep in the hole, and they're, they're pumping it out as fast as they can, and he's down there digging to try to make sure we have class the next day. So I stood around there uh, for about 30, 45 minutes, you know, picking up a piece of asphalt every once in a while and throwing the dumpster, just trying to, you know, look like I was busy. And finally they looked up and, they, and one of them said, hey boss, why don't you go home? He, he said, we got this. Hey boss, we got this. Why don't you go home, go to bed? We'll call you if we need you. <laughs> sure enough, next morning, nobody ever knows, nobody ever knew. School, just like normal. Those are the type of people that make us look good, make things successful. So I've always appreciated it. Had nothing to do with me, just like this uh, success that we've had over the years. Uh, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that do it for us. So I've always appreciated that. Second thing is, uh, I had to apply for this job three times. <laughs> but the, the, uh, coming from Ira Ann, the first time they're like, well, you know, you come from a small school. We're going to look at some bigger schools. So I waited a while. Second time I applied, because I noticed the job was still posted. They said, well, we're going to interview this guy from Ector County. We think, you know, he's got ex big school experience and la, la, la. So <laughs> they didn't hire him. They called again, and they said, why don't you come down and talk to us? So I came down, and, and I interviewed with uh, Bob Vanderee and Patty. Uh, at the time, it was Patty Jackson. Now it's Griffin. So uh, I got past that interview, and Dr. Pugh was here, and they said, all right, he wants you to come back for a second interview. But the second interview is going to be a fake presentation in this room, uh, and it'll be over something called the local optional homestead exemption, which in Iran meant nothing because we were a property wealth school. I didn't know what it meant. So I had to go do a lot of research and make some phone calls. And, what is this thing? <laughs> anyway... Continuing with the story, my, my interview interview was in here uh, at 10.30 in the morning. And I pulled up about 9.45, and I get out of the truck, and I don't have my tie. It's, I left it at home. And so uh, I went down to the Dillard's at the mall. At 10 o'clock, they opened, and I bought this tie. Aww. And so, you know, I'm a coach, and an old coach is a little superstitious, and symbol, symbolism means a lot. So I found it only fitting that the very first time I ever came in here, uh, there was about three people, Dr. Pew, Patty, and maybe one other administrator, and I'm giving this fake presentation and with this tie on. So I found it only fitting that my very first time at this podium and very last time is wearing the 17 years. That's how frugal I am. <laughs> but, uh, um, but I've enjoyed every minute of this. Uh, Y'all are a great board, fantastic board. And I told the group uh, the other day, that uh, you know, I'm going to disappear in good hands with Dr. Blair. He has all kinds of experience and knowledge. Uh, I, I learned a lot just listening today, and uh, he, he's going to be he's going to be great. And I I told the group in the little party we had Friday that on January 6th, you know, we're going to take a break. January 6th, we're going to have about 14,500 kids come back to school, and guess what? They're going to take care of it. We're going to be fine, and I look forward to uh, to seeing how well things go. So. Thank y'all all for the support over the years, and, and uh, you're a great board, and I appreciate all the support, and good luck to you. So thank y'all. Just one more. Just real quick, Jeff. I'm sorry, but uh, what I really enjoyed about you was that you, you never wanted any other credit. You always give credit to your, your staff. So uh, you, you were great. I enjoyed you a lot, so uh, good luck in your next journey. It's not going to be marathon running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got good. Yeah, he has a good sense of humor, too, so we appreciate that. Um, announcements. Um, Pay's graduation is Wednesday, um, December 18th at the Sarah Bernhardt Theater at 6 p.m. Amy's got it covered. Okay. 
Um, so that covers A. B is we have city council is uh, fond of recognizing us during school board recognition month, which is in January. So that um, is going to occur on January 7th of 2020 at 8.30 a.m. They usually do a pretty good job of getting us in and out of there. So unless you just want to see, uh, stay and see what's going on in city politics, then uh, we can go and be recognized and then leave. It's nice for them to be, to be able to do that. Our finance and pre-agenda board workshop is scheduled for January 13th um, at 5.45 p.m. And then our regular board meeting in January is uh, Tuesday, um, January 21st um, at 5.45. So is there any other board business, anything we need to put on a future board agenda? If not, and hear no objection, we'll stand adjourned. <laughs>